Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So I just wanted to start it off uh, and apologize that I haven't been active for the last month or so. Um, really, there's not too many excuses I can make for myself other than I've been extremely busy and I really haven't found the motivation to sit down and make a video on my computer. Um, now, I apologize to you guys. I know a lot of you have been subscribed for a while and you've been waiting for new videos, um, but I'm trying to get back into the flow of things now and I should be coming out with videos, I'm hoping at least once a week. So right now I've, I'm sitting down and making a video and I'm making it on another Python tutorial. Now, in this case, I'm going to be showing you how to make a really simple game. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because on some of my other Python videos, I got a really, uh, a large amount of support. I'm really thankful for that from you guys. I've been getting a lot more views on them and a lot of you guys are really enjoying them. So I figured I'd make some more. Now this one is directed more towards beginners, um, people that are really just starting off with Python. I'm not going into any graphics in this. It's not going to be a GUI, um, anything crazy like stuff I've done before. It's just going to be a really simple text-based game that you can show your friends, you can show your family, and you can even maybe play by yourself. Now, in this case, I'm going to be making a game and it's going to be kind of a quiz on myself. So I'll show you a quick example. I've got one open here that I made earlier. You can see, hi, welcome to the Tim quiz. Try to get as many questions correct as possible. Question one, what is the name of my YouTube channel? So I'm going to answer correctly. We say tech with Tim, like so. It gives us a little feedback, says so correct. What is my age? Well, you guys should know I'm 17, put 17 in there. What is my favorite sport? Now I'm going to answer this one incorrectly. I will tell you what it is after, obviously. Um, what is my favorite sport? I'm going to do, let's say, um, football like that. Incorrect. What is my favorite food? I'm just going to say sushi. That's incorrect as well. All right. So you can see it says, thank you for playing. You got two questions. Correct. You got a 50% mark and it says, nice. You passed barely, but we still did pass. And that is uh, a really simple game. And that's going to be something that I'm going to be showing you guys how to make right now. So first thing we want to do is if we don't already have Python installed, go ahead and do that. To do that, uh, just go Python uh, on Google. It'll bring you up on the website here, python.org. Downloads, download Python 3.6.5. Really straightforward, really simple. Do that. Once it's downloaded uh, in your little search bar down here in Windows, you can click IDLE. So just type that in. It's going to pop up. It'll give you a little console that looks something like this. Now you're going to click File, New File. There you go, your screen should now look like mine and you're ready to get uh, running with Python. So I did that quickly, but that's all right, you guys should be able to follow along. So I'm just gonna click Control S here and I'm gonna save this, uh, let's say simple game two, because I already did one earlier. Um, and let's just get started right away. So what I wanna do is I first wanna start by kind of greeting our uh, user. So I wanna say, hello, comma, welcome to, and we just did a Tim quiz so maybe let's just do like trivia. Welcome to trivia like that. All right. And we'll say underneath here, we're going to do a new variable. In this case, we can say ANS which stands for answer. I'm going to put input. I'm going to explain this after just follow along for right now and say, are you ready to play? Like so I'm just going to give the answer I'm expecting. So either yes or no like that. All right, so we just start off with a really simple print statement. If you guys don't understand any of this that I'm doing right now, I do have some really basic Pi game tutorials that you can go ahead and follow. Um, they're just on my channel. I'll leave a link to them up in the top right here and in the description down below. Uh, it'll be in the form of a card if you want to click on it on the actual video right now. If you guys are interested in more advanced tutorials, this one's way too easy for you. Uh, go ahead and check out my Pi game tutorials. Uh, it's how you make a graphical game in Python. A little bit more advanced, but it's more rewarding and you actually get to see some physical stuff on the screen. Again, card right now, link in the description down below. Okay, so we say input. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow the user to type in after this line, either yes or no. So I'm just gonna put a colon here so that gives them a little space to type. Um, are you ready to play? Yes or no. And just now I'm just going to go a little if statement and say if ns dot lower and explain what that does again in a second equals equals yes we're ready to play we can go ahead and continue typing our stuff in here so what this little dot lower is that I put here is it's actually a string method and what it does is it turns all of our input into lowercase so right here whatever the user types is going to be stored in this variable ans and then, for example, if they were to type yes in all capitals, 
and we were to compare just ans equals equals yes well it doesn't equal lowercase yes it equals uppercase yes so this is going to be false it's not going to let the user play so by putting it dot lower it changes that into lowercase letters so we can then compare it against this and make sure that we don't get people typing yes or um, maybe have a capital y at the beginning of yes um, and not being able to play so we'll get right into question one. So in here, I'm just going to actually up top, let's do this. I'm going to define a new variable. I'm going to call it score. I'm going to set it equal to zero. I'm going to say total underscore Q. So that's just going to stand for total questions. And in this case, we're just going to do four just so it doesn't take us too long. Obviously, you guys can do a lot more if you want to do that just by following the format I'm about to show. So now we're going to ask the next question. So we're going to use ANS again for answer. I'm going to say input. Then in here, we're going to say question one. And what's a good question we can ask? We can say, um, what is the best programming language? Now, obviously, this is very subjective. Uh, you can answer any language you want in here. In this case, I'm just going to put Python, just because I can't really think of a good question right now. Um, but if you were to really do a trivia one, you might want to do something that's more fact-based. All right, we're going to say, again, if ans equals equals Python. All right, but we're forgetting something because someone might use a capital P for Python. We want to put dot lower in front of here. What we're going to do is we're going to add one to the score. So score plus equals one. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to print correct. So you don't have to tell them if they got it correct or not. I like to do that um, just so they know which ones are getting wrong. But if you don't want to and you want to make it kind of a bit harder for them to play again and again, try to get perfect. You don't have to tell them if they got it correct or not, and you would just leave out the part that I'm about to type right now, which says else print incorrect, like that. So all you would do if they got it correct is you'd go score plus equals one, and then you move on to the next question. Now for the next question, it's really straightforward. All I'm going to do is copy this, paste it down here, and then I'm just going to change the question and the answer. So question number two, let's do maybe a more fact-based question. Let's say what is 2 plus 8 plus 9 minus 1. Now, who can do that the fastest, all right? So I know the answer. The answer is 18. So we're going to do that. Now, the only thing is I don't want to put this dot lower method anymore because I'm assuming the person is going to be typing uh, numbers. So there's no point in putting dot lower. And the reason I'm putting quotes around my number here is because at any time anyone inputs anything in here, even if they type in, for example, 18 or like 187, it's going to come in as a string data type. Um, and I don't want to be checking number against string, right? So I'm just going to keep it in quotations like this. All right, we're going to go down again. Same process, paste that down there. Question number three this time. Now for question number three, let's change this up a little bit. And we're going to say... Um, Hmm, what's a good question we can put down here? Okay, this one's good. What is better, a 1050 Ti or a 1060? Now, these have to involve graphics cards, so I'm just going to give a little thing in here just so people know that we're dealing with graphics cards. Um, it's not just some random thing. So if you don't know the answer to that, um, it's pretty basic, but I'm just going to put in here the answer is 1050 Ti. And then again, we just keep correct, incorrect, and we'll go ahead, we'll do another one, and this will be our last question, just so I don't bore anyone too much. Number four, and we'll say, what should the question for number four be? What's a good trivia question? Let's see here. We'd say, who came second in the Stanley Cup Finals? I believe that's how you spell Stanley Cup. Maybe not. Anyways, uh, in this case, I'm just going to give <laughs> the option. I'm just going to put in here. We're going to say the Knights. I think it was the Las Vegas Knights. believe so. And then people are able to type. Uh, obviously, they might not type Knights. They might type something else. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to put Knights um, because that's the answer that I would type in here. Now, if you wanted to, for example, give someone the option to be able to type two different answers and have that correct. Um, so maybe you wanted them to be able to type Knights or you wanted them to be able to type Las Vegas or Vegas. The way that we would do that is we're just going to copy this here. I'm going to put or I'm going to put control V and say ants.lower equals in this case, I'm going to say 
Vegas. Now, what this allows us to do is it says, if the answer is Knights or the answer is Vegas, we're gonna say that's correct. So if either one of those are typed, typed in, then that's the correct answer. And you can do that for any of the things like this. If you wanted to go maybe three answers, you would just continue uh, or, and then do the same process um, for whatever the other answer would be. All right, so now that we've done that, I'm just gonna test this to make sure everything's working okay. We say, are you ready to play? Type yes. What is the best programming language? Well, obviously we know that it's Python. What is two plus eight plus nine minus one? Now, in this case, I'm just gonna type in the wrong answer. Let's say negative nine, all right? Incorrect. What is better, a 1050 Ti or a 1060? That's graphics card. So in this case, 1060. Incorrect. Oh, it's because I put the wrong card in the, the answer slot. Don't worry, I'll fix that in a second. Who came second in the Stanley Cup Finals? Vegas. There we go, correct. Great, so everything's working except this one just because I put the wrong answer in, silly me, 1060. Now, that's all great, but what I want to do is at the end of this program, I want to print out how well they did in total. So it's okay for four questions. Um, they probably know how many they got right and how many they got wrong. If you had a lot of questions, maybe like 20 questions, then we want to give them kind of like a mark. So in here, I'm going to say print. Thank you for playing. And then we're going to say comma. Uh, actually, comma in here. You got and then the little space, a comma now, which is outside of the quotes. And this is where we're gonna put our score. So score, and then questions, correct, just like that. So thank you for playing, you got score, which is gonna be for our score. So like two, three, zero, whatever, questions correct, period. After this, now I wanna print out their mark. So in order to figure out what their mark was, the percent they got, what we're going to do is a really simple math calculation. So I'm just going to say mark is equal to, and I'm going to put brackets because we need to do a little bit of order of operations here. We're going to say score divided by total questions and then multiplied by 100, just like that. And then again, I'm going to print down here. I'm going to say print mark, comma, mark, like that. And then after this, I'm going to say print goodbye like that so let's go ahead and test this out hello welcome to trivia are you ready to play yes i am what is the best programming language python correct what is 2 plus 8 plus 9 minus 1 18 what is better 1050 ti or 1060 so i'm going to answer this run wrong and just put a 1050 ti incorrect who came second in the stanley cup finals we'll put the knights although i just realized we need a k for knights I, I am okay at English, guys. Don't worry. All right. So thank you for playing. You got three questions correct. And our mark was 75. Goodbye. Now, there's a few things I want to fix here. Obviously, Knights needs a K <laughs> like that. Sorry about that. I'm sure a lot of you were screaming at the, uh, the screen when you saw me type it like that. And then we're also just going to get rid of these spaces here. So after it says you got and then questions, because when we put the comma here, it automatically is going to put a space before and after our variable. So same thing with mark. We can get rid of the space. And also, I want to add... Um, the percent sign. So to do this without having a space, we're gonna say mark plus, and in this case, we're now gonna have to put string for mark, and we're gonna add a percent sign like this. And you'll see how that looks in just a second. All right, so let's go ahead and check this out one more time. Are you ready to play? So I'm just gonna show you what happens if I click no. If you say no, uh, it just says thank you for playing, you got zero questions correct, mark zero percent, goodbye. Um, obviously because your score is zero, and then if we click F5 and we click yes, say, what is the best programming language? In this case, we say Python. What is the answer to this? 18. What is better? In this case, I'm going to get it wrong again. 1050 Ti and Vegas. Correct. Thank you for playing. You got three questions correct. Mark 75%. Goodbye. Now, if you wanted to, you could do a little final touch here. So once I said no, it still went ahead and said, thanks for playing. You got whatever. If we don't want it to say that, all we have to do is highlight all this and just click tab because now we're indented into this little if statement here. So if we said no, it's just going to end the program right away. It's not going to bother um, saying the rest of the stuff, although we might still want it to say goodbye. So if we unindent goodbye, what happens here is once we get through this if statement. So after we've done all this, it's going to say goodbye. If we don't ever end up getting inside of this if statement because, well, it wasn't yes then it's just going to print goodbye like that. 
All right, so that's pretty much been it for this uh, video. Just been a really simple uh, explanation and kind of tutorial on how to make a really simple game text-based. Obviously, you guys should be a lot more creative than I am and come up with some good questions, stuff that'll actually be entertaining to play. Um, you could do a quiz about yourself. You could do something like this. And it's a really neat way to kind of start learning how to program and it's a cool game you could show your parents you could show your friends uh, and test how well they know you or test how well they know a certain topic or something like that so if you guys enjoyed the video please make sure you leave a like and subscribe i'm planning on doing more videos like this so if you guys enjoy these let me know in the comments down below and i'll be sure to make some more I'll see you guys in the next youtube video